This is Rachel, and this is topic 27 in our supervision curriculum, behavioral skills training. So at this point in the supervision curriculum, what I tend to do with my supervisees is introduce a topic, but then have my supervisees practice searching the literature for additional information and explaining it back to me. So many of the next topics will not involve me instructing as much, but introducing a concept and then assigning that research um, to the trainees and having them come back to group supervision and explain concepts to the rest of us. And then we provide feedback and we talk through some of the things that they have found. So today, I'm going to introduce the topic of behavioral skills training. So training others is not just as simple as telling somebody what to do. Um, you may have experienced this level of training before in other employment opportunities or um, in other situations where someone just says, here's what you need to do. And while that might be enough explanation for something that you are already familiar with the skill set, or you have been in a similar situation before, a verbal explanation might be sufficient. However, if this is a brand new skill, or something that you are not fluent with, or the differences between how you have done it before versus what is expected now are great, then just telling somebody what to do is not going to be sufficient in changing their behavior. Um, individuals may benefit from having it modeled to them, have somebody show them how to do it, watch someone else do it. Maybe they need handouts to remind them of the steps as they are learning a new routine. And they could benefit from practicing it hands-on and then getting feedback so that they know whether or not what they're doing is exactly what someone is asking them to do. Behavioral skills training is an evidence-based training method that basically incorporates all of these things, all of these different components that someone might need to learn a new skill into a systematic presentation so that you can effectively teach people how to do something new or how to engage in a new behavior. Often we talk about behavioral skills training in the context of training staff or educating caregivers, how to implement specific interventions or how to uh, change a particular uh, behavioral strategy that they've been using. However, the process would still apply to many of our learners. They just might need more supports in some of these components. So the steps of behavioral skills training, I personally like the, the longer list version. You might see some that shorten this into three or four or five steps. I like the seven step version um, that just kind of breaks out all those pieces uh, a little bit uh, in more detail so that we're sure we're not skipping anything. So step one, would be to provide a rationale as to why this beha behavior needs to be targeted. Why, as your supervisor, am I asking you to learn behavioral skills training? Well, it might be because I expect you to be efficient and effective in teaching other people, technicians, caregivers, teachers, whoever, to implement the behavior protocols that you are developing. Having a rationale might help someone to have that buy-in to then listen to the rest of why I should do this or how should I do this. Um, and I'm sure you can think of people who they're not going to work on a new skill unless they understand why they need to. So let's just start with, in our BST protocol, let's just start with explaining why. Why should we do it differently? Then it's great to provide a written explanation, a written description of the behavior. This would be a nice handout for people to reference back to. They can take it with them. Some people um, do better with reading the information and that helps them to remember it better. We provide these uh, 
supervision topics. We provide written instruction here as a reference so you can go back. Step three, provide a verbal explanation of the behavior. So I do want to tell you, I want to elaborate. I want to maybe give some of those examples and experience and have a conversation around how to do this. Again, some individuals may learn very well from hearing someone describe the expectations, describe how to do something. So that's why I'm recording these videos so that you can hear the explanation as well as have the written description and understand why we want you to engage in this behavior. Then step four is provide a model of the behavior. This could be done through a video model where you find a video example or you create a video example. It could be something that you're doing live in person with that individual while you are teaching the new skill. Here, let me show you. It's just like this. You could be doing that with the learner who you're serving, or you could be doing it in a role play situation with the person that you're trying to teach. So a model here, we're working through these steps. Our supervision curriculum is designed to model behavioral skills training. Step five, opportunities for practice. So this is where you want to then give the individual that you are trying to teach this new skill to the opportunity to practice the skill. Ideally, you want to create um, an opportunity for them to practice in a situation where the risks are not very high. Um, maybe it's private, maybe it's a role play, so that you can then, step six, provide feedback for those practice opportunities. Within our supervision, we have assignments, we have discussions. Those are our practice opportunities for the individuals to display that they are understanding and developing that skill set that we are asking them to display. Um, and then we provide feedback. We provide written and, and verbal feedback, vocal feedback to the individual based upon uh, the practice that they have done. Step seven is going to be re repeating the practice and feedback, possibly the model practice and feedback um, until the learner meets mastery criteria. So it's not just a matter of presenting an assignment, presenting a practice opportunity, telling them, no, that's not it, and then leaving it at that. That is not behavioral skills training. They have not demonstrated the skills. So they should not be expected to display the skill. So we want to continue to practice and provide that feedback and practice until our learners can demonstrate the skill that we are looking to change. So that is the seven step version of behavioral skills training. This is a really good way to make sure that you are catching each potential maybe learning modality that someone has, people that learn better hands-on, people that need an explanation, people that like to hear the instructions, people that like to read the instructions, people that want to see the examples, people that need any combination of those. If you plan your teaching and your instruction to include all of those components, you can very quickly work through all of those. And then now you have provided a complete evidence-based training method for whatever behavior it is that you want to teach. And it can be relatively simple and um, short. It does not require a long duration. I have done um, exercises teaching around uh, specific types of preference assessments provide a rationale, that's a sentence or two. Um, provide a written description of the behavior up on the slide while I am also verbally explaining how to conduct this particular uh, preference assessment. Then I model it. Maybe I have a video that we watch together, or maybe I demonstrate it live during the training. Then everybody breaks into little groups, or if we're on camera, they practice it, they role play it with me. And that takes, you know, maybe a minute or two each person, provide feedback. And then we, if they weren't successful in doing it, we would practice it again and continue to provide feedback until they can demonstrate that particular preference assessment. In that case, 
of doing a preference assessment, behavioral skills training, I can work through all of those things in 15 to 30 minutes, depending upon the skill set of the individual that I'm teaching and how much practice and feedback is necessary. So behavioral skills training does not require you to spend so much additional time. It's going to make your training more efficient because you are focusing on what is the key behavior that I want the individual to engage in. And I'm presenting all of these different ways so that they can seamlessly move through this. Now, for somebody that maybe already sort of knows this skill, you get to the practice and feedback part. They demonstrated it. You say, great, that's wonderful. And you mark it as mastered and you move on. You don't have to sit there and repeat. So this is something that can move very quickly through for individuals who are already fluent with the skills. So it's not going to be necessary to hold them back, even if they have already done it, already know this skill, something like that. Now, the other hand, we wouldn't necessarily be teaching a skill that we know our learner already knows how to do. So if it's a staff that I'm training, um, maybe I have done an initial assessment to see sort of what skills they already have, because um, maybe during the interview, we um, role played some of those actions or I asked some questions. Maybe that's possible. Sometimes we might be presenting to a group. So we have um, a lot of people with a variety of levels of skill. So we just teach all of it. And then we spend more time on the practice and feedback for the individuals that need more practice and feedback. So that's behavioral skills training. Um, the assignments, like I said, this is where I start sending out my supervision students to do some research on their own. So find an article that uses behavioral skills training, summarize the article describing the participants, the methods, the measurements, and the results. So we get to practice summarizing articles and then prepare and deliver and so this would be the next time that we would meet, prepare and deliver a five minute presentation describing behavioral skills training using your article as an example. And basically I am trying to assess whether or not the trainee can define the steps, can identify the steps in an article and can describe them back to me. So that is all for today's topic. Um, if you enjoy these topics, please subscribe below so that you are aware when the next ones come out. And if you want to ask any questions or um, provide any answers, uh, it's a little bit harder with this one, but if you want to link me to a PowerPoint presentation or your own YouTube video where you describe behavioral skills training and you'd like some feedback on that, I'm happy to provide feedback um, or answer any questions in the comments. Thank you so much.